This is Three Gun Nation Pro Nick Atkinson. I just got beat by Greg Jordan again. You're listening to the Three Gun Show with Dave Hartman. Welcome to the Three Gun Show, episode 39. I'm your host, Dave Hartman, and this is a fun little interview. It's a roundtable with Corinne Moser, Keith Garcia, and Rick Birdsall. Before we get into the interview, I want to thank you for downloading and listening to the show. The Three Gun Show is a weekly podcast dedicated to the fastest growing shooting sport. In this episode, it's a little bit of a departure from what we normally do. This is a window into the lives of the average three gunner. And, uh, three gunners that operate at a high level. We talk about how they view match performance, what they think of their off-season practice and what they're uh, going to be practicing, and uh, and what they think about each other, which is, is kind of fun. Now, this one's a little bit PG-13, but no worse than you've heard at your local club. Links to everything we talk about can be found in the show notes, so just go check out threegunshow.com slash episode 39 when you get a minute. And now, please join me in welcoming the show, Corinne Moser, Keith Garcia, and Rick Birdsall. It's a family show, Keith. We can't be doing that. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Let's do this thing. All right. We're, we're, we are here at the uh, 2015 Three Gun Nation Nationals. Uh, I'm here with uh, three competitors that just got done. Rick Birdsall. Rick, welcome to the show. How's it going? And Keith Garcia. Keith, welcome to Three Gun Show. Thanks, Dave. Good to be back. And Corinne Moser for the first time. Corinne, first welcome time. to Three Gun Show. Thank you. All right, so this this is exciting. This is the uh, first time I've had this many people on on the mic, and we're in a, a room with a safe and an elk, and and Corinne is and petting the elk. Corinne can't keep you, her hands off the elk. How can you not? I mean, it's beautiful and dead, but it's beautiful. <laughs> it looks like it's taking a nap. It's lying it, down yeah. backwards. Well, okay, so the, be- the best part we were supposed to have Kalani Laker in here, uh-huh. but the elk is better. It's more yeah. per- it's more personality. <laughs> wow, it's, it's the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Those are dreamy eyes on the elk over there. So you guys just got done shooting the uh, match, and you were all in the same squad. Is that right? Yeah, we were in the super squad. Super squad. Okay. Pretty special. So, Rick, how did the match go for you then? It, it looked like it went pretty well. Um, I shot pretty well. I'm running the factory division. Um, I got to uh, compete against Jesse and Jansen Jones. I think Jansen's still shooting, so we'll see where it all shakes out. But I like my odds. Looking good. I'm going to go on record and say that you're talking to the uh, the 2015 <laughs> Three Gun Nation National Champion in Factory Division right here, Whoop. and Rick Birdsall because he shot very Hopefully. well. I was very impressed with the way he uh, he shot over the weekend because they got to use uh, limited rounds and the magazines and the shotgun magazine can only hold what eight. Uh, the, the the handgun and rifle are limited and it's it's tough. It's real tough. You can't have an optic, right? Yeah, Factory this year they they changed the rules so it's eight plus one on the shotgun, 15 rounds in the pistol mags, and then. The one power optic, um, so your prismatics and your your red dots on the rifle with thirty round mags. So you can't really compare the times anymore like you used to with the old tech optics, and it, it really it really makes it difficult with the, the stage planning things like that. You know, watching you and Karen trying to figure out the stages and then shooting them, and I and I the whole time I'm thinking, well, I'm just going to load the magazine up and I'll just shoot, and then I'll then I'll put my gun. <laughs> what down. are they doing? Yeah, no, this is and, so much yeah, easier. And you than guys what are doing. shooting <laughs> one here, and then you're going to do like take three steps and shoot one on another target. Then you'll shoot like four targets and you do a reload. I'm like, why are they doing all it's that? It's completely different. So it's hard when you're making your stage plan. you got to have oh. to just ignore everybody else's, what they're doing and their good advice. Oh, this is what I'm doing. What are you doing? Well, what I'm going to do has nothing to do with what you're yeah, going to do. Because at the yes. end of the day, you know, there's a faster plan and, out there, and, but you can't run. Mm-hmm. It. Right. And so I was walking the stages and Hunter Cahill came over and he wanted to walk the stages with me. I'm like, Hey, this is great. Let's go walk the stages. He shoots open. So the whole time he's trying to tell me, no, no, let's just shoot shotgun for this whole thing. I'm like, Dude, you got 20 round mags in your shotgun. <laughs> yeah. I got to load them you one at a time. He's like, no, no, you don't understand. You take this paper with the shotgun slugs, then you will shoot bird shot here and some more slugs there. I'm all, I, I can't go back and forth like that, Hunter. It's, it's crazy. I can shoot pistol on all of it. Well, if you want to do that. <laughs> but the whole time, the whole time, he's like, yeah. no, no, no. He's like the little devil on my shoulder. You really should do this. You really should do this. I finally just said, I said, no, I'm not going to do any of that, Hunter. No. We were shooting together, so it was great. So I got to watch his plans. They were they were all completely different from mine. Yeah. And one of the tough thing that, you know, Corinne and I were talking about during the day is that a lot of the pistol arrays, because they are centered around open and TO, it lends you, it let your, it forces us to run like one alpha. Mm-hmm. So you got to really yep. slow mm-hmm. down, and it makes a lot of the plans. It makes the stage times a lot slower because if you don't hit that alpha, 
now you don't have your round run a for new the mag next, change yeah, yeah exactly. it, it throws everything off. forces you to slow down and be focused on accuracy which is yeah. one of the things that i like about that division in the first place um the focus is on accuracy and, and remembering that you know ammo is not you know unlimited you yeah know. you can't shoot like an open shooter you, you that's for sure you can't just blaze away you got to think about it and be right, conservative because right. if, if there's 20 rounds of rifle on the stage i run a 45 round mag and what are yours 15 when you for, for rifle, rifle 30 30 okay because yeah. it was like now we have something like 28s so i'm like ah, i'll throw in a 60 yeah. just in case you know, just so I have a little extra i ended pads two, some yeah. of those targets because i like to triple tap stuff so you know and i'm looking at them and you're like one 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 yeah. why would you do that just just pull the trigger fast yeah you know? on two yeah. different no. stages i you ended with one back. round in yeah. the man yeah. so, you, got, yeah. you gotta be a better shooter to shoot uh factory oh uh, you guys it's just boring. boring it's you just boring well, yeah but you guys had some you look like you're having fun yeah, it, it's a good time. You know, it, it's it's fun to challenge yourself with if you could come up with a, a factory plan instead of a TO plan. So yeah. it's a no, good time. It was and Corinne good. shot real well. What would you think of the match? Uh, I thought it was really great. I loved all the stages. Uh, probably the best part of the match, though, was the squad that we were on and being able to watch Rick and uh, get get help um, and uh, everybody. So it was everybody was really talented. We went through really quick. Stages were good. Guns ran amazing. Um, so overall, I think it was a great t- couple days. So let's set the stage. Yesterday afternoon, we go to stage one, and our second shooter shooter is Lena Mitchley, and she shoots the first rifle position, runs about three steps, puts her rifle in the barrel, and it flicks and turns and falls on the ground. And obviously, that is a big letdown for everybody. Everybody loves Lena. Everybody knows Lena's the favorite to win, mm-hmm. and it, it really was like, wow. It kind of takes the wind out of your sails, because yeah. we had like mm-hmm. four exactly. DQs on our squad. Uh, oh, wow. And was it that many? Yeah. It so, was, yeah. so And uh, 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 Kay, uh, her gun broke, her handgun broke at the start of a stage, which is really tough to deal with. So we yesterday, there was just a lot. It was like the Trail of Tears yeah. Yeah. for her squad. You just had to survive Going yesterday. through the first, first like three stages, everybody was just like, holy crap, what's going on here? That's a rough day. It was it was interesting. Yeah. The super was squad really didn't look great. Yeah. No, we, were, we, we were not too super great. Greg, Greg had a couple penalties, and, the, the, and, the, and RoboCop never has penalties. So Yeah, was, I was shocked by that. Yeah. He had an FTE, uh, and he never yeah. forgets a target. Yeah, he did, yeah, he ran right past wow. it. Wow. Yeah. So it was, it was, that was That's different. That's incredible. Um, but you know, it was, it was interesting because ever, everyone else was trying to pull together and just shoot a solid match. And unfortunately there was, there was a lot of ugliness and, uh, luckily Rick, you know, Corinne, uh, Ashley Rourke, who's in our squad. Uh, I think, uh, she also won the national championship. I'm going to go on a limb and say that, that, uh, she shot, uh, bring it home. she certainly deserves it. She's, she's yeah. amazing. Her first I want to be year, like her when I grow up. Uh, <laughs> this is her first full season of three gun. And she, uh, I believe she won the national championship in the ladies' division. I so, sure hope so. Very impressed by her. She her, tears it up. Her dad, Shane, is just like the dad I want to be. He's there, like, carrying her bags and putting her mm-hmm. stuff together. Doesn't even shoot the matches. Yeah, I saw uh, that. Very, very I cool. got to meet them for the uh, first time. And, yeah, Shane was, you know, a totally cool dude after, you know, uh, you know, meeting them and, and just chatting for the brief period of time. But then when I was watching you guys, you know, shoot some uh, stages yesterday, then I realized, you know, he's he's there for the entire thing, like Mm -hmm. for, you know, support. And and, the cool uh, thing, he's he's just as invested as she is. I mean, he takes everything that she does and he's looking at it all and trying to help as much as he can with stage planning and and really every different element in her game. He's trying to add whatever value he can. And it's just cool to see that. Mm hmm. Yeah, and we had a great squad because it's like Kalani. He had he was having gun issues. He was having uh, some ammo problems, and and we striked up a little thing. It's, it's it takes a village for Kalani to shoot a match. So he <laughs> shot my rifle. <laughs> he had he had Rick's ammo. He borrowed Corinne's handgun. You know, it was just these. It, it was a typical Laker deal, but you know what? It, the Jedi. He got through it, right? It, and then the last stage, it took him seven stages, and he finally he beat, beats me it. on the last stage. He just killed just tears it. it. He's like, I finally got used to all these guns. I'm like, well, you know, if you brought your own. <laughs> yeah. And they worked. You had your own stuff. You, you probably would have started shooting good at stage one. <laughs> yeah, I think he was like a second off Greg on that one. I mean, he burned that stage down. Yeah, yeah he was real, yeah. He did real good. Oh, wow, that's incredible with a whole mess of borrowed guns. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so we, uh, we also got to see the uh, – uh, shoot off in the eliminators on um, what was that Thursday? Dave, that, Dave, that's, that's probably a sore subject for Rick. Is it? Shh. Oh man, that's that's okay, that was man. tough, man. He's he's not he's that arms distance away from me. We can't reach each other. <laughs> I do have short arms. Yeah, it's true. Uh, I also got in a short arm joke in that one too. Yeah, so. but I did it, so it doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> I loved you this off one. So we got it, it was cool to be there to uh, get to see it after we've seen it on the live stream and on you know Sportsman's channel and stuff like that. Uh, the one thing that I didn't like about it 
is there's way more mosquitoes out there than there were in my living room. Like, my back looks like I'm a dinosaur right <laughs> that now. That was the first time I'd seen it like that. When we, when I shot my pro match, I don't know about you, Keith, but I don't remember a bunch of Isn't it like freezing cold? We've, We've never been here this time of That's year. That's true. Oh, okay. We've yeah. never been here this late in the year for a, a nighttime event. Yeah. Uh, we've all, we're always coming uh, in the summertime when it's the worst, the, the hottest, and the mosquitoes have never been an issue. So no. I, was, I, I didn't, yeah, I saw them in the lights. I'm like, wow, look at that. They're everywhere. And then they were biting everybody. And we needed a few rounds of bird shot. Just was, throw them over right? the <laughs> Right? Is it, so that's what, that's what happened. You were, they were in your eyes. Yeah. yeah. It, it got pretty bad. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> yeah. Such pretty eyes. Not as pretty as the elk. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rick, for the, uh, for the people that missed it, and uh, you know they're going to be watching it in a few weeks or months on Sports with Channel, why don't you give us a little rundown of, of how it went? Yeah, so unfortunately I let everybody down. Sorry, all the listeners out there. I wasn't able to bring it home this year. But, uh, no, it, w- it was tough. We had the uh, a lot of the same arrays they took from the Pro Series stages that they had run previous in the year. So we ran the shotgun on the Polish plate rack. Then they really threw us a curveball. I think curve they call that something else now. I don't think you can call it. I don't it know. What it, what's politically correct on that one? I don't. Hmm. What are they calling that? Uh, they're calling it the uh, like Wheel the of the Fortune. the Propeller Rack? The Propeller wheel? Rack, that's what it okay. is. Okay. No, Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune. Are we we're dubbing? To th- we're we're going to dub we our own name here? Sound decent. That's probably Propeller trademark, is though. Just telling you. <laughs> I'm from San Francisco. I can say that. All right? <laughs> a lot of his best friends. It's fine. No, it's fine. I'm not a Wolf Jeez. It's all all right. No. Um, so, the, uh, so they went to the, the Propeller, <laughs> the propeller rack, rack, we'll call it. And uh, that was pretty standard. We ran that with a pistol at the in the Pro Series during the regular season. But they threw us a curveball with the Death Star this time. They made a shoot with a handgun. And then once we found that out about a week ago, everybody was really freaking out. Because as you can imagine, trying to shoot a, a star yeah. while it's spinning and you know articulating back and forth, that's what everybody was worried about. And we really all looked past the rifle, and that's what ended up getting me. Um, just too many makeups on the, the rifle plate rack. And then um, had to go down to the Eliminator, which... They unveiled a new classifier for, I, I guess, upcoming seasons. I don't know how they're going to run this as a classifier because this was the hardest stage yeah. I have ever shot. I, I I watched that and it looked it absolutely was unbelievable. Terrible. It was the uh, the rifle was like the four by ten plates yeah. or so something you, out there. The the shotgun and the pistol were the beginning of the stage, but it was really rudimentary and just a bunch of transition work really. Um, but so, man, so you got take to it back. Rifle. What was it? It started with pistol, right? Yeah. So, you, so it was well, three poppers, mag change, three more poppers. No, then. you actually started shotgun. So okay. you loaded the shotgun. The shotgun, shotgun started to dry. You loaded the shotgun up, eight clays, dumped the shotgun in a bucket, drew the pistol, shot three poppers on the left, mandatory reload, shot three poppers on the right, dumped the pistol. So that was like the first 10 to 15 seconds of the stage. And it it's was, all from one position. Yeah, there was one shooting box. You didn't leave the shooting box. So it was pretty pretty straightforward at the beginning. But then you picked up the rifle, and that's that was basically the entire stage. You had uh, five 4x10s at 50 yards, and then a mandatory reload from the belt on the rifle, and five more 4x10s. That was honestly the hardest target I've ever shot in a match. Really? And, and to make it sound hard, you were standing offhand, correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. No support. No, no support. yeah. Because a four-inch behind target table. at 50, oh, that's, that isn't bad. But when you're standing there and yeah. you're breathing hard. And it's and, the last gun. Yeah, and, and there's and lights. You're and trying to, yeah, and everybody's all, watching and you're yeah, trying to shoot these things. Yeah, there's probably 100 or more people behind you, too. Yeah. So. yeah, no. I mean, I'd rather shoot my my dot gun at a 10-inch piece of steel at 400 yards than shoot at a 4 by 10 again yeah. at 50. 50? Is that oh, what it was? Yeah, okay. that was that was that was a nightmare. Yeah. That's a real tough shot. You gotta get. It's funny because people don't think. It's like with a shotgun. They'll put a slug, a, a ten inch or a six inch or eight inch plate at like twenty yards, and people are like, "Oh, that's that's no big deal." It's it's easier to shoot uh, an Ipsic target at a hundred yards yeah. than it is to shoot that six yep. inch plate at twenty yards. It's just it's it's the surface area, right? And you get that four by ten, and you get that wiggling side to side because that's where it's not about up and down. Yeah, it's about right. side to the side. The ten inch up so and down is, is irrelevant. Yeah, Your wind is so easy to move off that plate. And, I mean, you could just – I don't know how much of it they'll put in the show itself, but, I mean, it was eating up everybody. I mean, it, it ate me up. I think it ate Kalani up. It got. I mean, it got guys like Jerry Micklick. You know, I mean, it was – I don't know how they're going to be able to run that as a classifier yeah. when guys like us can't even put up a good run. It's going to be a really interesting classifier for sure. Yeah. I mean, it has – so, um, you know, I, I haven't done a lot of the USPSA classifiers. Is there a classifier that stands out in USPSA that's, like, you know, unobtainable for the GMs? 
Keith would know. Well, okay. So in uh, USPSA, when you go to shoot the classifiers, there's old standards like, you know, El Presidente, yeah. which is just stand and deliver and reload, deliver. And the whole key to all of that stuff, if you want to become a grandmaster, is fast draws, fast mm-hmm. days, fast reloads. Everything's got to be done fast, fast, fast. And then they do things like long range standards. And uh, for several years at the, at the national championships, they would have 50 yard standards. And that's generally where the pistol shooters go, womp, womp. Because that, that shooting that 50-yard target is something that not too many clubs do during the normal year. And now they've got turning targets. And you're standing in one spot, and you're, and you're having to deliver some accuracy. And generally, you see a guy who nobody knows, who probably was an NRA, you know, uh, bullseye, bullseye shooter, bullseye yeah. shooter yeah. Who, would, who, would, who would clean it and then win the stage. But, um, like, for three-gun now, there's this trend to make them harder. Everything's harder. So I've been practicing my 100-yard steel, you know, taking a – uh, a 24 by 24 and shooting it at 100, doing my plate racks at 30 and 35 because there's this trend and I think Three Gun Nation and the regionals and stuff has kind of pushed it to make everything harder. And you know, we went, we, we had select shots out there 150 in a match. So that stuff's kind of crazy, but it is what it is. So you have to practice, you have to prepare for it. So I changed the way I, I was manipulating the trigger on the handgun. I changed my training, uh, my, just the routine uh, and really focused on a lot on accuracy. And when I do it right, it's great. You know, mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, this is beautiful. It really is. And then I get into some close targets and just <laughs> whack the hell out of the trigger. And I turn around and I start doing that on the 30 yard plates. So I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Go Gotta back to again. what you were doing before. Start aiming. It's that, it, and it is that going back and forth. So now in my training, I'm going to do where I've got the the hundred yard plate, the five yard piece of paper, the hundred yard plate, the five yard piece of paper, and just start doing that. So you get those transitions down more because it's really become more precision than anything else. In this match here, there was not one stage where we could shoot uh, fast rifle. There was no. No, we didn't hose at all. There really? was no driving mm-hmm. the gun and running like. I, I brought my fourteen inch gun because. Generally, these matches, uh, last season, uh, uh, Taron Butler set me up with a 14.5-inch upper, really, really, really light. And because uh, he saw me bring my, uh, my my other upper out, it was like my duty gun from work. He's like, well, what do you want that for? I'm like, hey, I need something that's light. He said, hey, let me send you this. And it was great. I mean, it's just it feels really, really good. But it's for really going fast. And I came out and won the last two uh, pro matches last year with it. And, and again, it's, you know, it's a 100-yard end gun, but it, this stuff's mainly 50 yards. And it was just great for just driving, transition, shooting on the move. Just awesome. I, can't, I brought that one here, and all we did was shoot six-inch plates at 50, standing <laughs> standing yeah. offhand. You know, I, was like, I, I had oh, my 13-and-a-half arm light. I wish I would have had yeah, my 18 I, because I, I didn't I need an any of the – exactly. the, the lightweight. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just you know one of those things where you, uh, you think – you, you, the match is going to be like it was in the past, yeah. and you show up, and of course now they're whenever Charles is involved and Ken Nelson, uh, it's going to start going towards you know being a little bit more difficult, uh, which is fine. You know, I honestly I thought this one was going to be more like the the, the pro matches because that's kind of what it was built, but uh, it turned out to be a good match. It was very good. Each stage, I can't say that I was disappointed with any stage. And, I, and I've, I can say I was ecstatic with my Benelli from Taryn Butler because we had a lot of slugs, and I didn't miss one. I was so Sweet. happy. I, yeah, I you mean, were on point. Seriously, I was like, hmm. The farthest we – they had him out to 70. And uh, I was like, okay. So the first, first, first time we shot, I had two extra in my gun. And I'm like, I, I didn't need them. The second time, I went one extra. And the last time, I'm like, uh, all right, we're going – I've got to go support it at 75. Yeah, I'll put two more in there, hit them the first time every time. So I was like, this is the way it should be. Um, I had Pat Kelly set me up a shotgun with a rear sight, and it, it's dead on out to 150. So it's like, you know, I'm not worried about slugs ever again. So the, the Benelli with that, you know, it's not a problem. Some of the other manufacturers, their barrels aren't the same quality. Those Benellis are awesome. Would you agree? Really? Yeah, no. Well, I, she, I would definitely she had say some that some great plans. I had some, yeah, I had some strengths and some plans that a couple of them yeah. were different than what you were telling me I should do. They were strongly suggesting I forget my plan and go with yours. But um, no, at that point, you know, I just it was too close to you know going, and I didn't want to change something up and then risk forgetting what I was going to do. So even though it wasn't it probably wasn't the best plan, it was the plan that was going to work best for me. And um, this had, was a weekend where, where I, some of my equipment definitely outperformed me, but I had some pretty darn good plans. Well, we ended up talking about it afterwards, and I think Keith agrees that that might be the faster plan. Which with one the was the slugs that, right? on the uh, the circle stage? Oh yeah, no, oh, admit no, it, admit it. That was yeah, a great no, plan. No. That w- yeah. yeah, no, you know what? I did that. So, I tried so to talk around so, of it. So describe the uh, <clears throat> stage for folks that weren't here and. Uh, 
our, Which our one? listening Was at that the one that we started where yeah. the rifle paper, yes. there was yep. two on each side, Is two so, long so, range so, that we so could grab? So picture this day. Like a baseball we, we show diamond. Up there. Yes. Yeah. We mm-hmm. get there at 730 this morning. They actually have the portable lights out there because it's still dark. It's freezing. And uh, Greg's going to shoot first. No, it and, wasn't uh, he was, <gasps> He's in second place at the time. And uh, and uh, the rest of us are you know, d- down in the air. I think Kalani was second. So right after those two guys shoot, and they, and they shot well. And, and, and we had put together some good plans for this stage. And I'm like, I, if one of us pulls it off, it'll be a stage win, no problem. And then the sun peeks over the berm, mm. right? I mean, just, oh my God. And there's the, all this paper with a rifle that's standing in the liver with, with five little poppers out at 50. And now I can't see a thing. And I was like, I was glad it was, it was really cold. So I was glad I didn't have to shoot first. And I was like, God, I wish I could have shot first. Well, I think <laughs> I was I, like, oh, man, I wish I could have shot first. It was it, either well, going to be blast. the sun. It was yeah. either going to be the sun in your face or it was going to be the smoke, the smoke yeah. or the fog from your breath on your scope, which is what happened to me. Um, the, the, what we were getting at is that that plane that we we're talking about was in the second half. The mm-hmm. first half was the rifle. And what happened to me, I didn't get the sun, but the very next person after me, that sun peaked up. And I was like, oh, I went at the exact right time. But I did have to deal with the, the you know, right when I got up to take my sight picture, I raised the rif- rifle up, couldn't see. Big the scope exhale, So I'm like, bring anything. my shirt down. I'm trying to like, That's, okay, I got it. Okay, good. She good did thing what I, I checked. did in Virginia. Yep. And and then, it was the whack-a-mole. It, every yeah. She would pull the trigger. She'd oh, pull her head my up. head popped up. You know, look to the next I just, one. Put I her head down. Broke my cheek weld, lifted up, put it back down. Didn't move the rifle, broke it up. I, every single one, it was, I was, I had to check to move the gun to the target. Hold it where it, I think it was. Press the trigger. Lift my head up. Did I get it? Nope. Okay, got it. And then move well, it again. The other, it was, the other, th- the other it tough was part of that stage is that with irons, we ah. had no magnification. And they had painted all those targets blue. And now you got grass as the background. Yeah. It, they, was, it, was, yeah. it was kind it was of gray blue. Yeah. Blue, gr- uh, gray smoke or, <laughs> you know, everything. It was impossible to see. So that, that hurt. But the second half was went really smooth at least for me with that plan you that, had a better plan than i did. that i hadn't seen anybody run yet at, when i went and then i think i saw jerry run run it something yep. like that right after it and i was like oh my gosh i did a plan and i didn't take it from him but he did it too I was like that's pretty cool so now that worked out pretty well um jerry took the whole my time, plan. so yeah no well hey he's welcome <laughs> to it it was that it's no we out. think that's what's going to be the stage win for to that the slug plan on that stage yeah yeah, well, here's the thing. Um, the guys who shot in the afternoon, you know, yesterday or today, uh, or at least after like third stage in the morning, whatever they were going to do was going to be a stage win. Because I think, I, I want to say Wyatt had a, somebody had a 42. Greg ran it in a 44 when it was dark, and the rest of us were slower. And yep. uh, Nick Atchison ran a 43. Oh, okay. uh, later in the day, but when it was nice and warm, and that yeah. was the plan that him and I had worked on. And it, it, he, he's very, he's shooting great, so it was close. Um, but uh, if it, it, it that one is when you go to a match, sometimes like yesterday morning, I was like, "This is so funny." I'm sitting in my hotel room, it's raining like hell, <laughs> and I'm looking at the weather. And it's going to stop at eleven, and I got to shoot at twelve thirty. I'm like, ha, ha, ha. I'm just laughing my ass off. And then this morning. I was thinking, man, I wish it was raining right now. Yeah, we got ours, really? definitely. There I was wish a trade-off. It was, if, yeah. it was, if it would have been raining, it would have been better. Oh, mm. because it would have been no smoke. No fog. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm done with rain. Okay. No more rain oh, for me this week. Why Are we going that? there? Are we going oh, there? We, you, should we go no. there? Are we going there? No, it, just, it was raining in South Carolina. I just I don't understand. No. I don't I don't. Shooting through a hurricane. Oh, hurricane. Which hurricane yeah, was that? No. Hurricane Lisa? Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin? Joaquin? Yep. They're getting pretty elaborate with these names. <laughs> it's a random generator. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> it's got to be, but it has to start with a J, but it, now it sounds like it starts with a W when you say it. Oh, okay. mm. So, uh, so this is like th- your third match in a week, This right? is like Correct. my third match in a week, it's which crazy. may not be a big deal to, to pro shooters, but I'm... You are a pro Well, shooter. I don't... Not, I'm, I'm don't have a title yet. I'm don't looking have a at title your jersey. Yet. Oh, the jersey. Uh, yes, I've got amazing sponsors. We've got Hornaday, and we've got Terran Tactical, and Weber Tactical, and Tacom, and... Uh, all those, but but don't have an official title yet. But um, no, we I went down to South Carolina uh, for the ladies match, and you know, it turned out everybody had a really good time despite the weather. We knew the weather was going to be there. I, I know that stopped it stopped a lot of people from coming. Um, but those that showed up, you know, we fought through, got to shoot a couple stages. Any day you get to shoot is a good day. Um, you know, weather, at least there wasn't any lightning, but man, it would not stop raining. So we ended up shooting three stages of nine. Well, three that were scored. Some people shot more, you know, but, um, sounds like a Charles, that, Charles it, soul match. You know, we got to shoot on Saturday, canceled on Sunday. So, uh, but then I was recruited 
while I was there to stay and shoot um, a show, the the Top Gun or the, the Big Gun, the DC Machine is putting it on. I think it used to be called uh, Lady Hot Shots or something like that, but that's going to be oh, airing okay. in January. And it's one of those, um, you know, el- eliminator type shows. You start with 12, you end with one. Like a Top Shot uh, style. Like, yeah, Top Shot style. And that was but a it's blast. Like ladies so only. Type ladies thing. only. And it was, we started with 12 Keith, women. Keith did show up with a wig and they made him go home. <laughs> what? You know what? Come on. My breasts were bigger than a couple of It was of the women. calves. They're, they're not very <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> So. All that junk in the trunk, <laughs> Keith. So anyway. So we shot that for three shot days. Shot that for three days. And then uh, we were all a little bit, uh, more than a little bit worried that we weren't be able to be able to leave in time on Wednesday to get here in order to walk stages. So uh, it was uh, Diana Muller and Ryan and Becky Yackley and Lena Mc- Michalek. Please tell me how to say that. Please, officially. How do, how do you say it? Jerry said Michalek. Michalek. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we Can all you piled it, like, into trucks Cajun and drove out here. Though? No, I cannot. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we got sure. here exactly when we wanted to get here. So What do you worry was... about stage plans? You stole everybody else's. Oh, I stole one from you. <laughs> I'd say one and a half, and then I ignored you on two. So hey, that balance. Don't make out. me break you two up, all right? Yeah, well. Okay. She's, she's, always hey, in the she's all about the elk, man. I, I don't I'm, have a chance. I've got the, the good side of the room over here. So. <laughs> As she pets As the elk again. The elk. That's not creepy at all. No. <laughs> all right, so I'm, I'm going to change the uh, subject up quite well, a bit. Well, I got a question for you real quick. Really? Yeah, okay. I do. I want to know what you thought, because you were hanging around while Kalani, Nick Atkinson, you were there, while we were all gaming stages yeah. on Thursday afternoon, I believe. Mm-hmm. And I want to know how what you thought of that. Because you, you guys were just kind of hanging stages. out. Well, yeah, what did you think? You know, I, I thought it was really cool. Um, I thought there was way more teamwork um, amongst people who are not team members than I had anticipated. And uh, the way you guys were bouncing... Uh, stage strategies off of one another um, was really cool. Um, not not just in the fact that you were sharing stage strategies and like you know I think it should be like this, but in <laughs> also in like the no nah, that's bullshit. <laughs> this, this is the way you need to do it. Like, no 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 you're stupid. Your heads up. Well, everybody butt. comes up with their own and they think it's the best. Yeah right? absolutely. Yeah. But but the way that you guys were do it were doing it and you were talking to each other and working with each other, I had not expected that. You know uh, from like a you know. You figure be more secretive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I figure like you know maybe the Armalite guys talk to each other, maybe Team Benelli talks to each other, you know s- something like that. A- whatever team it is. Yeah, you know um, you'll find there's some teams that won't share, and mm-hmm. uh, you know the, the army. We won't talk about the army, but um, <laughs> the uh, like and, T- and and Tommy and Greg, they're great shooters, and they have their own plan. They usually don't. They usually don't share it either. But for the rest of us. Uh, you know, it, it's not like pistol matches where guys will yeah. go up and outright lie to each other about yeah. what they're going to do. That's the funniest thing I've ever seen. See, that's that's when I used the, to shoot the frame nationals. of reference I come yeah, from. Yeah, when I, I'd go shoot the nationals and people would out, lie about their scores, lie about how they're going to shoot it, yep. lie about how they were doing. It's like, really? You know, why? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, these guys are good guys. And, and, and Corinne and, and the rest of them we were shooting and just had fun. We had fun. Yeah. We, we bounced ideas and strategies off each other. And it's a great way to – because, you know, I'll, I'll come up with a great plan. They'll be like, hey, what about that target? Oh, yeah, well, I, I, I didn't did know that, that target. Guys. I didn't know that target was. <laughs> yeah, that. no. I think mm-hmm. Dave pointed out which one was it. I don't remember which uh, target it was, but none yeah. of us there were there was about five of us oh, pro the, guys out there. The back and forth. None back of and us forth. saw the target except Dave. Yeah, it was the back and forth. We had to go both sides for shotgun, both sides for rifle. Oh yeah, the two paper. And then there's two paper that were snuck back in there. All clays. You're like, well, we, can get, we don't have to go all the way over there. We right? get it from right yeah. here. I'm like, what are you guys going to do with those two? It was like me You're going to get two failure engagements. Yeah. He's the only one that saw it. That's good that you told him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a jerk, so. Well, there, there you go. Uh, have you done any three-gun, Dave? Oh, of course. Okay. Yeah. So you but meet? I've never done a three-gun nation match. Okay. So coming out here and seeing this with, like, my, my frame of reference being USPSA-style three-gun matches, it was completely different. I mean, first of all, it's like, what? Target's painted blue. Why are the targets painted blue? You know? <laughs> so everything's painted white in USPSA-type stuff. So, yeah, it was really cool. Uh, you know, I, I've you know, mentioned it before, like I was completely taken by how clean everything is, how the, uh, the tables aren't like the warped piece of junk that's been sitting out and they just dragged it out from behind one of the Connex boxes and put it on there. And now it's wobbling and we're going to use that and your shotgun might fall off of it. Everything's built like brand new. The, you know, it's nice and painted. Everything looks the same. It's, 
you know, a, a uniform sort of thing. And granted, they probably stepped their game up a little bit because this is nationals, you know. Mm-hmm. But that's there's pretty typical, actually. No, yeah, pretty this, is, this is yeah. Yeah, the for level of nation. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, nation. Yeah, they've been, uh, they, you know, when they came on the scene, they kind of raised the bar. They set the for standard. How, how yeah, for sure. Done. The USPSA nationals are, are very good. They they do a high production value. Uh, Pete Bresing's been running for the last couple of years. Great. Before that, you know, when, when Mike Voigt was running as the the as president, he he put together some great matches too. Uh, but Three Gun Nation is is it's a business mm-hmm. and they run it like a business so you know it's uh it better look good because you're trying to sell a product right if the packaging sucks then people aren't gonna have a good time yeah so, absolutely and you know that makes for a better product you know it it's a better experience too so the you know shooters vote with their dollars and there's a ton of people here well, you well, always know a, what to expect yeah. you always know what to expect when you're going to three gun nation you know regional or match or anything national this is my first natural uh nationals mm-hmm. um and I, I had a really good time. Well, I mean, it is the first nationals, so it's. I is guess it everyone's what? first was the first national. three gun nation? Oh well. <laughs> shut up, Rick. <laughs> Don't shut up, Rick. It makes for a terrible <laughs> podcast. I'm just gonna sit here and be uh, quiet. All right, most most exciting time of the match was today. <laughs> we're shooting the house stage. Oh, oh my god! My goodness. So we're all standing Holy inside crap. the house. Now, the house has a uh, cement slab. I need a new pair of drawers. No carpet. And there's a dump bucket with a shot. You stage your shotgun, you're going to shoot slugs. Mm-hmm. And you shoot rifle, then you dump your rifle and you grab your shotgun. So we're all standing there, and, and one of the shooters, who will remain nameless, uh, shoots his rifle, ditches it, grabs his shotgun. Now he grabbed it up on the handle. So his, his finger, as I was watching him, it wasn't anywhere near the. Uh, yeah, he grabbed the butt stock. Yeah, he grabbed mm-hmm. the butt stock. So it wasn't anywhere near the trigger, but something caught on the barrel. And he launched a one ounce slug. Oh, shit. Into the cement. Yeah. Right, twenty feet with, away. Yeah, with mm-hmm. everybody standing there, and, the, and it went left, right, forward. It went out the side of the building. It hit Brian Corey in the hand. It, it, a piece hit Brian. A piece hit uh, Ashley, who was mm-hmm. the, uh, one of the other uh, ROs. Kalani so and I it, ended up in the fetal in a it corner. Was, yeah, it was terrifying. Well, but you were there earlier too, so I don't. <laughs> I, think it was, well, it was, I wasn't going to say anything. Why you got to put that on blast? I, th- I found him. I found him that way in the car when I showed up. Why, why do you got to put said, that on blast? It's cold outside. But it was he really. Me it was it for was, body heat. It was very exciting. Uh, you see how people really do <laughs> react when when bad things go bad, and uh, he was more just baffled. Like what? Well, yeah, well he how? felt terrible. Well, he's he sitting there looking at the, the, yeah. looking at the gun. He's not even touching the trigger. He's yes. looking at the gun. So I went over and took it from him because I've been around a lot of things with guns that went bad. So I just took the gun from him and said, "Hey, let me look at it." And I looked, and that safety was all the way on. Oh, really? It was yeah. all wow. the way on. That's the craziest part about yeah. this. He didn't touch the trigger. Safety was on. I mean, I I still don't know how it, it could have happened. That was bad luck. And I, did he some, like hit it on the table or well, something? It's, like in a, it's in a bucket, and he reaches over, and he starts pulling it straight up. And something it, it, something along the side of that gun, I can see the manufacturer, drug on the side of the bucket, and it made it detonate. And that was that was not good. Well, it's pretty scary. So no, we he were said lucky, he had done any work to the trigger. No, we, everybody we, started. We took we a step were back. Then very, after that, very lucky because it was a slug. And mm-hmm. not yeah, that was just bird shot. Yeah. That was uh, a slug that, going twelve hundred. Yeah, that's yeah. you know pieces of that are bigger than a forty five. So people could have really gotten hurt the way yeah. the gun was set, and, and you know it, it was it was too bad because their second to last stage, one of our shooters got knocked out. Another DQ, right? Yeah. And it just you know it makes you, it makes you realize two things: one, anything can happen, and two, you better wear your eyes all the time. Yeah, because, absolutely. Uh, mm-hmm. That would be real easy to get your eyes poked out with something like that. So uh, that is our pro tip for the week: when you're at the range, wear your eye protection. Mm-hmm. Wow, amazing way to say <laughs> wear your eye protection too. That's a first hand knowledge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's, yeah. That was pretty rough. Dang. Well, uh, everyone turned out okay. So going forward, we, uh, you know, we're done with the uh, the season, the Three Gun Nation season. Training is going to be happening next, right? Are you guys going to be taking the time off, or are you going to be just jumping right into training? Is there something from this match that you learned? I'm going to take like a one month of nap and just <laughs> kind of relax for a little. Let while. the monster get out of your system. Yeah, I'm still pretty jacked up on monster. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I mean, I one of the big things because this season. In the shooting community, the season could be so long if you let it be that long because there really are matches everywhere all the time. Yeah. Um, I found that in the middle of the summer and then as much as I can in, in the winter just to kind of put things down, you know, clean them up, get everything ready for the next year, but not really focus on the live fire or the matches. Just do the, you know, the training and the, the airsoft and the dry fire and just but step away for a little bit. I, I feel like that's important so that when you're – when you start it back up, you you feel a little bit rejuvenated, and you never get burned out. 
What do you think, Keith? I mean, I know you do similar things. Yeah, you know, uh, I do. Uh, I do like the dry fire. I can tell you that. Um, I will certainly uh, go home, and I will certainly revisit the transitions with the pistol from those long, really difficult targets to the up-close, easy stuff, back to the long stuff, because that was something that uh, we did a lot of in this match. And you really had to be uh, on the trigger on the sights. And there's a point where, you know, you settle in and you just shoot the sights. And that's what all, you know, any, I tell all my students, look, the fastest you're going to do is if you just get a hit every time you can shoot the sights. Mm-hmm. Don't try and out shoot the sights. Shoot the sights when they're on the target. And that's going to be your best performance at that time. Then you start speeding up how fast you can keep the sights on the target and how fast you can move the gun to the next target, etc. And with these transitions now from close to far, close to far, close to far, that's a new, it's a really, a, I mean, because we're talking hard targets now, not like 25 to 15. We're talking 10 to 100. So we're, we're trying to speed up those kind of transitions. I'm going to work more on that. I think uh, I was real happy with the way the slugs went. It took a couple of months to kind of yeah, don't touch square them. away. Yeah. It's don't working now. It's working. I, won't, you know, I won't even clean that gun. I won't take it apart. <laughs> Hard, won't do anything uh and then you know then really it's uh it, there'll be one more match for me the surefire match at the end of the month in vegas and then it's going to be uh rest rehab I, I just just lost 40 pounds just eating right or exercise and lose about another 20 get ready for next year and uh it, it, everything's geared towards getting together for shot show get getting to vegas for shot show and just just you know meeting new sponsors, uh, representing current sponsors, rolling out anything new you got, and uh, building new relationships um, outside the club, Rick. Um, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, just... just Not cool, pre- bro. Pre- <laughs> you're single. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, you know, just preparing for, for a great year. I think, I think 2016 is going to be amazing. Well, and one of the things that I know that the community has really enjoyed is your, um, you know, your challenges, your shotgun challenges that you've been putting on Facebook and things like that. But um, I feel like this is the best opportunity to call, call you out. Like I'm, I'm holding my camera vertical for the people that are listening, and this is how 13-year-old girls film a, a video. This, <laughs> oh, this key, horizontal. This oh. is how you film a video. When you go watch Jurassic Park, it's not shooter. like this. this. <laughs> Professional oh, shooter, semi-pro snap. videographer. <laughs> snap. That's true. You know, when I'm watching videos on my phone, I'm usually watching it sideways. Yeah. You see? Mm. Yeah, um, exactly. So, yeah. No, all right, all right, all right. I'll That's always it. just amateur work. <laughs> I'll, make, I'll make sure. But, you know, it's so much easier to hold in your hand. Uh, yeah, I got it. I'll yeah, look. exactly. I mean, yeah. this, this is the natural thing on a, on a phone. But, you know, if someone's, you know, watching it like in a, a normal environment. And, again, like when you go to the movies, you're not watching Jurassic Park like this. So. All right, I point taken. <laughs> I do. I got actually. I need to Something get Something left field. Do well. I, I need this. to this step up my game with a videography. I need. I need to get like pay somebody to come out and film me. Cause yeah, I, absolutely. It's not right. Oh, fancy, you tried that right? once, but that went on a whole new website. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, that's yeah. The, <laughs> but they'll probably know that they need to hold it letterbox. Right. Yeah. Right. As long as they're doing that and they're tested, we're good. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right, Corinne. How about well, for you? This was my first full year of shooting three gun. I, I met. Taryn Butler last year in in October at the first ladies three gun match and um, everything just kind of exploded since then and so my goal for this year was shoot as much as I can um, and then go have my personal practices where it's just skills um, skill drills making sure that I'm focusing on accuracy you know because of the tack irons that I do um, and uh, also just to kind of hone it back in because when you're at the match, you're like, go, go, go. And so what naturally happens is that you speed up, you go faster, you find out where your weak area is because you add a little bit of a stress uh, stress factor. And so suddenly your weak areas just kind of pop out and you're like, ah, slugs were not so good today. Mm-hmm. So in my skills drills, I'm going to work on slugs. So you take that, then you mix it back together and then you put it back into the next match and then you see how it's going from there. What do I need to work on for the next one? So. Um, like I said, I tried to go to as many major matches as I could, Three Gun Nation, but also some outlaw ones. I have awesome clubs around where I live. I'm very fortunate. Like um, like Rick said, you could shoot every weekend. You could shoot yeah. multiple matches a weekend if you want to. So it's like trying to make good decisions about what you need. Um, so I've been shooting an awesome outlaw match um, at Lead Farm at Tooth & Nail Armory in Versailles, Missouri. Uh, or Versailles, is the Missourians call it. Yeah, no, seriously. <laughs> it's it's spelled Versailles like Paris, right. or in, in France, but um, it's Versailles. So... <laughs> Um, awesome. <laughs> it's, but it's amazing. And the coolest thing about this range, not only are they awesome, they always set up the best matches. And we shoot very difficult things, especially for tack irons. We'll shoot out to 600 yards. Um, they come up with creative stuff. So that's, like, harder sometimes than three-gun nation-style mm-hmm, stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's, like, pr- going to these super, super hard 
and then coming here or somewhere else. Um, so I think I'll just keep doing the same kind of stuff that I've been doing. Like, you know, even with this match, I okay, now I know where my weak areas are. But also I can see the progress that I have been making. Um, so, yeah, I just keep keep training and, and going to matches. So even, even in the winter, you know, I yeah. go to some outlaw matches, you know with the hot hands and, you know, three layers of clothing and, and all of that. So it's just, it's fun to do. So I don't want to stop in an off season. There's no off season. Just keep going and right. getting better. And then hopefully next year I'll, I'll be a better shooter. What, there's no off season. You got to make me look like a bitch. What's there's this? no off season. Okay. Do you if even you want gun, it, bro? Come on. Apparently no, I just, no, you, yeah. you know, you see Corinne on the range and, uh, you know, she has a, the reputation of being kind of serious. Do you think she really goes home She's and rest? She's pretty intense. Right? Yeah. I'm serious. She probably right? sleeps with her eyes I, honestly, open. Honestly, I thought she was a mute. <laughs> For the first year, I thought she was a mute. I didn't think she a spoke. Mute, well, I thought yeah. she was well. like a spawn of Greg and like another <laughs> robot. Like just a different, like a girl robot. Right. Yeah. Right. I thought like that was, terrifying. thought that was well, going on. Good. Yeah. No. Just, <laughs> the I ice just, princess. When I'm, when I'm at, I have, I'm just trying to shut my mouth and keep my ears open and my eyes open and just try to f- concentrate on what I know how to do well, what I need to do on my plan, and then just work at it and then... Um, just pay attention to what other people's do what other people are doing, and I don't know. Yeah, I guess that makes me quiet most of the time and serious looking. Like, but pretty it's just, intimidating. This is just my face. This is my happy it's face. Just the way her uh, face looks. This is that, my happy uh, face. How, how'd that Hornady ammo run this weekend? Uh, no problems whatsoever. It's always awesome. Like I said, everything outperforms me usually. Um, been shooting the uh, the American Gunner, um, 115 grain hollow points actually, which is pretty cool. I've got some. Yeah, you let me borrow a few on stage. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, you didn't hollow points. Didn't even, yeah, hollow points. No, that's what I'm shooting. You um, know they're more accurate. It's like a golf ball. They fly truer. Go with me, Rick. Come on. I, I don't know, man. Go I'm, with I'm me. just an engineer. I don't get go, go the physics. Go with me. Come on. <laughs> just go with it. <laughs> physics are not your thing. One thing I get I made fun of. I don't of. math good. <laughs> <laughs> Rick was making fun of me for shooting the 68 grain. Yeah, so we're out here at all these base Hollow stages. Points. She's shooting the heavy, like, long-range ammo. Hey. A dollar a round on all these <laughs> stages. Yeah, I need to pick Jesus. up something a little bit lighter, but it's working so good. I guess I didn't, you know, see a problem. Kalani asked me today because he was shooting my gun and my rifle. He's all, you still shooting those 36-grain bullets? And I looked at him, I'm like, why you got to tell everybody? Yeah, why you right? got to put me on blast? Why, why you got to say that? <laughs> yeah. No, we were just joking because <laughs> I, I experimented with some 40s and 30s. Right. So it's just playing around. Yeah, we all did um, a couple of years ago when yeah. the pro matches. But it, it yeah. doesn't, it's not like pistol uh, where you load and you can get There's a, a threshold. Load. There's, yeah. yeah, it just doesn't work. So 55 is fine for everything or 52, depending on what you want. But for just across the course kind of stuff. I mean, long range, you get into yeah. you, you know, dealing with your, your heavy bullets. But uh, yeah, the, 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 the light bullet experiment didn't work. Didn't work at all. You know, so she was dropping 68 grain hornets. Hey, it runs the gun. It dollar, goes, dollar, it goes dollar, bang every dollar. time. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Fine. Make them count. Makes that's the right. ammo manufacturers happy. Go big or go home. Right? Yeah. What was the uh, round count on rifle then? I went through a ton of rifles. We shot quite a bit this weekend. I, let's put it this way. For the first four stages, I took 200 rounds of handgun and probably 200 rounds of rifle. And on the last stage, uh, we only had five rounds of handgun. And I was like, I'm going to have to go to the car and get some more. Because wow. we had shot a lot yeah. in the first four stages yesterday. And uh, quite a bit of rifle. All of it was long. I mean, it wasn't, none of it was fun and fast and dirty and oh, just driving geez. the gun like I wanted. <laughs> but it was still a lot of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it is what it is. So Corinne d- dropped a few hundred dollars worth of 68 grain on the range. Oh, easily. Oh, yeah. I put it sure. to good use. Good use. There you go. Well, you know, this has been great. Uh, you know, the shoot-off is going to start in uh, you know hour or so here, so we ought to go find some adult beverages or something like that and saddle up a seat. So Bring Rick, the elk. Bring the elk. <laughs> bring oh the elk. Let's carry the elk out there. We should carry the elk out there. That's awesome. Can Rick, we wear it as a hat? Can... <laughs> Would you stop interrupting him? Gosh, <laughs> dang it, Rick. Little ADD the over there. The best three-gunner Detroit has to offer, Rick Birdsall. Our targets move. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Well, thank you all for uh, for coming on the show. Thanks for letting us thank do this. You. This is fun. Dave, thank you for having me back. We got to do this it. stuff more we often. We should. Yeah. We definitely should. We got to figure out how many people we can Skype in at once. Okay. I'll start researching I think, that. I think we could do a lot of these like round tables and have some fun. I'll start researching that. Uh, we'll do audio only, though, Keith, so you don't have to wear your pants, man. Good, good. I, yeah, I don't give, have any on give now. Give me my pants so. back, Rick. <laughs> Dude, you said I could have those. No, I got to wear something outside. Oh, damn it. What a great interview with Corinne Mosier, Keith Garcia, and Rick Birdsall. I had a lot of fun recording this one in person at USSA in Tulsa, and I hope you enjoyed it as well. Big thanks to Buck Hopper for giving us a quiet room to do this in. 
If you have any thoughts, feedback, or guest suggestions, you can email me. I'm Dave at 3 gunshowcom As always, please leave a review on iTunes. It only takes a minute, and it is huge for getting the show in front of shooters like you and I. Just visit 3gunshow.com slash iTunes. If you like the show and you want to show your support, you can do so by using our affiliate link when you shop at Brownells. Just go to 3gunshow.com slash Brownells and shop like normal. We earn a small commission on what you buy and no additional cost to you, and it helps keep the lights on over here. Thank you so much for downloading, listening, and subscribing to the show. I'll catch you in the next episode. Unload show clear.